Hello, everyone, and welcome back to RGLGG, where we continue our coverage of Season 15 Invite Sixes. My name is T. Sumano. I am joined by the amazing Zilli. We got Dolphin on production and again, and this is going to be a double header like the G6 versus Global Clan Ice, not once, but twice tonight. Uh, we're going to be on process and then Metalworks, so hopefully we got a great night of TF2 action headed our way. Zilli, how you doing, and uh, what are you kind of expecting about this uh, matchup? I'm good, dude. I'm expecting... Um... Honestly, a dominant performance from G6, but I said that last time, and we had a 4-3 last, <laughs> like, down-to-the-wire banger. <laughs> so, you know, I'm hoping G6 finds their game. It's, uh, I mean, I'm hoping we get a close game, too. Like, I don't think GCI can surprise, but I don't really, uh, I don't really think they have it in them. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the hater here. Okay, okay. And all that, 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 that's fair, you know, sometimes people need need a hater so they can <laughs> rise up against it, you know, kind of push them forward. Exactly. Um, I, <laughs> I guess, you know, to maybe be the supporter for Global Clan Ice, uh, like you said, we saw Global Clan proper at uh, last time have a very close game against like a G6. And uh, when you look at the matchup between Global Clan Ice and Global Clan proper, Global Clan Ice actually kind of won that one, which was Probably an upset for most people. I think when you look at the rosters between those two teams, you kind of favor Global Clan proper. They've got a lot of experience on that team. But Global Clan Ice, they pulled it through. And so if Global Clan Ice could beat, you know, Global Clan proper, and they had a close game against like a G6, maybe in some universe, this team could maybe get uh, a map off of like a G6. But uh, over the course of two entire maps, I do agree, like a G6 looking a lot more dominant and if you're kind of looking at the rosters right now and you're kind of uh, questioning why is Marmalu up there he's going to be filling in for this entire season for like a g6 kobe having to step away for the game for the moment so Marmalu stepping up to the plate and we've already seen over the two games what we've uh, seen of them silly they he has performed really really well i mean he's one of like the best players of all time you know especially definitely in na but He's proven himself, like, literally at the highest level, won multiple lands, won multiple seasons of invite. They're just, uh, it doesn't really, you know, if you're looking for a substitute for a player as good as Kobe, found a pretty good one in Marm. 100%, and they, uh, we, we, we were lucky to talk to them last time, and even though they have a little bit of a different play style, um, Marmalou has been adapting well to the team. Get your predictions in now, because we are going to go live very, very soon. I am going to say uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a G6 map. I think uh, Marmalou and Caps are going to pop off. I'm going to say it's them 4-2. to two. Um, I'll give it a... 5-2 G6 victory. Is this their map pick? I'm, I'm assuming this is their map pick. I, I feel like they wouldn't willingly go to Metal Wars. No way. Oh, no. interesting. Wait. Okay, so this is GCI's map pick. Um, I guess oh we did. I, I, I was kind of looking at the pregame as we are about to go live here. Global Clan Ice versus like a G6. Looking at the pregame, GCI were looking fairly comfortable uh, in their pregame scrim, but uh, they are going up against a lot harder of a team than they were in that one. And we're going to have to see how it all pans out like a G6 versus Global Clan Ice as we do go on to the first mid. A very aggressive bomb coming out from Grape Juice, and he's instantly going to be taken down by Sophie Meister. So already one down from Global Clan Ice, and they are immediately gonna back out of mid losing one going all the way back to their second and a really good opening for like a g6 romer diff bro so if he just <laughs> the right so much he comes in on the fast roll up g6 is gonna look for they're actually gonna find scratcher another pick so gci is gonna just have to give us up and go to last not really much uh happening just g6 finding two picks as quickly as possible in both fights and gci is you know stuck on last they're gonna have to hold while g6 looks to barrel in and find on the force here yeah they are peeking through five right now to try and see if they can maybe get anyone on to hannah uh but scratch is going to come up on the sniper to try and make that peeking process a lot more dangerous for like a g6 so they are going to be all up in lobby kind of distributing the kills around and now uh, uh kind of uh, the question is the eyes are on soapy meister to maybe try and do something as the roamer uh but he's got a heavy to contend with not ideal to be jumping in so it is going to require a bit of team play from g6 
Yeah, Sophie already going down to Quacks. Marmalou actually opting to go in despite Sophie dying still, and they're gonna lose three on the side of G6. So GCI should be able to get a clean push out here, but looks like Bombwood and Logan want to stay in and try to hold us all. It's even Ubers. Bombwood finding Penny. That's a big uh, pick from him. Yeah, it is going to be a very big pick, and also Global Clan Eyes are very slow to try to start capping it up the point. So, uh, like a G6 can start to move in here with the respawn. There's a lot of damage to the players on the point from the bombing soldiers. They do use the Uber on Global Clan Eyes. They're not going to be able to catch out anyone with this. They're only going to be able to back up to their last point. And so, like a G6, they didn't use. They're going to be able to recapture up second and instantly take this Uber in onto last right here. Caps going to be leading the charge, trying to knock those stickies off. Is going to be able to do so. Very aggressive bomb coming in from Marvel. Going to be able to clean up on the scratch. Now, finally, the Uber has been used so much time onto the point. The soldiers from Global Clan just trying to jump around and dodge and delay as long as they possibly can. But they're getting picked up one by one. The heavy, now the last one, the fall. Can uh, Paniferous do anything? It actually does a lot. Gets three kills there. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for her, she had three more that she needed to take down. Dude, that, he almost just on heavy, like, for like two <laughs> minutes straight from that second fight. He was just sitting back and roll out peppering people. But yeah, that was a, a valiant attempt from uh, the side of GCI, but losing too many people, like, G6 has just been taking one pick and, like, pushing, you know, point after point off one pick alone. But we're heading back into another mid fight here, GC. Yeah, heading into another mid fight. Uh, no one instantly dying on Global Clan Eyes, so instantly uh, a better start to this mid. Just gonna be trying to play around across the point. Uh, kind of a fadeaway bomb from Grape Juice. Now the collapse coming in from his soldier, but he does a lot of damage onto Logan, but Quacks not able to find the kill. Marmalou is gonna get traded out, and GCI now uh, kind of all falling. They're trying to escape through this choke area. Scratch is gonna go into the sewer to maybe try and buy some time for his medic to stay alive. The demo dies. Can Hannah get out? Looks like she is gonna be able to stay alive but with everyone else dying on global clan i still not how they wanted that to go it's just anybody who tries to get aggressive on gci gets punished so hard by the g6 players like they're making it look easy but sophie trying to go in trying to force gets taken care of and looks like uh g6 isn't gonna want to really lose anyone else here they do find the trade in yum yum though but we're trying to take this fight in lobby Something actually just run in the last trying to fix grape juice who's waiting for an arrow still going but still somehow alive actually creates a big distraction for Marvin to come in and the force comes out now G6 with full uber out here they pop off the exchanges completely in favor of G6 everyone isolated on the side of global plan ice and I think the round is just gonna be that easy I think it is indeed the respawners from Global Clan Ice now trying to come up and get onto the point. They basically have to stand on it. There's so much cap time already in G6's favor, but it's not going to be. Like a G6 take their second round, and, a, uh, and maybe there were some questions about Like a G6 after that Global Clan game. They are kind of silencing all of them right now. They look very much in control, and like you said, just kind of able to take these uh, a small picks from Global Clan Ice and convert them into rounds. Mama got away with murder, but yeah, the I think there's just not really a lot of commitment on the side of Global Clan Ice. Like one player will go in, and the rest are nowhere to be found. So be getting pressured here early on the mid by Yum Yum. So, it's like uh, you know, we're we're having more of a slower mid this time. Both teams offing the exchange ban, but the high ground is in favor of G6. GCI sending it in with both soldiers. Love soldier bomb comes in, and they're both taken care of pretty easily. Yeah, and they are going to have to escape Global Clan Ice. And, uh, you know, fortunately, again, they didn't lose their medic, which happened on the first one. But uh, Logan kind of got to the soldiers uh, saying, keep bombing me as the bombs have not been working out. And they are going to lose one more. Scratch was also very weak, and he is going to be able to go down. Sophie Meister with the rockets. Very unfortunate for Han as well, dropping her scout in all of that chaos. And now they're going to be at Uber Desad, at Player Desad, and like a G6 almost instantly, immediately coming in through four. They don't even have to use they have delayed so long very good use from Loga. he did go down very weak to that bomb from the soldier respawns from gci trying to get out through spawn onto the point a lot of space made by quacks might buy enough time not gonna be like a g6 taking the third round and they are looking so dominant right now this is violent bro <laughs> like, <laughs> like i don't think they haven't even made it to like they haven't capped a mid once like uh, they've just been mid the last in three rounds in a row Oh yeah, it is. It has been brutal. 
if you are a global clan ice right now a fan or the actual team as things have not been going their way the bombs have not been working out for them at all so uh, maybe you might expect them to try and play a little bit slower as the aggression so far hasn't been working maybe bait like a g6 into doing the aggressive plays themselves but uh, for the moment it seems to be what they're doing they're just kind of trying to play their own side g6 have so much control of the high ground right now just kind of bullying a global clan ice around they're trying to wrap around a very aggressive bomb coming out from Quax, now Grape Juice follows up. He does get a pill, uh, a pick the first time that, that has happened with one of their bombs, but still not going to be enough. Grape Juice actually saying that's his first kill of the match, but a uh, uh, with the rest of his team going down, that's still going to be a G6 mid win. But because they were able to take down Logan there, they might be able to kind of solidify a defense on their second. 3-3, three, three. they're actually looking to peak mid because they know Marmalu is the only uh, threat all off. Marmalu getting denied, but he does manage to delay. GCI from actually coming in to touch the point. But it looks like GCI still actually wants to take this fight, walking in on this even uber, even player situation. G6 giving up a lot of ground. Caps is looking uh, to want to take a trade here. He's waiting for GCI to potentially come closer. Sopi going down early. Yeah, Sopi actually stayed alive for so uh, long there. He kind of went in for the aggressive market guard, They're not working out. Uh, but because of that, like a G6, are going to have to concede mid. So. First ground taken if you are Global Clan Ice and uh, maybe a little bit of a confidence booper, just a slight bit. They still got a long way to go if they uh, want to take a round or even the match. And uh, we are going to see Marmalu going for a high bomb as everyone in GCI gets into the sewer lug. Because some good damage from Marmalu. He is going to jump back to safety. Space made right now from the Soldier Quacks, just kind of leading his team in through choke. Very aggressive from Soapy Meister, though. He goes in all the way behind and he's going to be a thorn in the side of GCI. They all wrap back to try and keep tabs on him. But because of that, like a G6, have an opportunity to get aggressive spamming the chokes. Marmalu jumps in, tries to be a little bit of a distraction, maybe open things up for Soapy Meister to come in behind because he is still lurking back there. Damage trade is going actually really well in the favor of G6 while Soapy turns eyes. Like they're really worried about him. Grape Tree's actually isolated in IT, Bombo uh, pushing him back. Soapy still waiting for that timing, waiting for the call, but he actually walks in early. He's going to get probably taken down here by the scouts of GCI. And they find him along with Caps, who is over peaking but with two players down now g6 is opting to just give up second logan trying to hold some traps but i don't think he's gonna be able to find anything here probably not and the, the farthest that gci have gone in this match so far and uh might be an opportunity to get their first round on the board they still have to try and figure out a way to a uh, demolish this uber uh, situation because it is going to be even uber's caps however is going to go down and actually low guy does have to use great stuff from quacks there getting in basically for free because caps wasn't there to defend their medic and now the instant immediate reuse coming out from gci they're using back in through five low guy is going to die in the spawn door that is so unfortunate now even if this push doesn't work out they can just keep hannah alive but Sophie Meister comes up huge with the wraparound play. He's going to be able to take down Piniferous and Hannah. And what was looking like a good last push for Global Clan Ice has immediately dissolved before their eyes. Yeah, it's, it, it looked really promising. Uh, fighting the Log I kill, they weren't able to like basically hold any round. And once they were you know caught in between of staying or leaving, Sophie just comes in with the flank and you know, pick, they pick them up all at once. Two kills here, though, on the side of uh, G6. They, they're looking to get through. Marmalu already in, committing deep. So much, creating so much space for the rest of G6. They're walking in completely clean. Marmalu does get taken down, though, but even yeah. far, right. Marmalu does get taken down, and because of that, like a G6, they're trying to back up. They take a lot of damage over by Choke, and there is someone trying to see if they can gut in behind. It is going to be Yum Yum starting a back cap right now, and now like a G6, they have to come back to try and deal with him. He's just going to be going back, being a nuisance. He's in a little bit of a 1v2 situation. He is going to get cleaned up very, very quickly, but uh, his kind of a uh, diversion play is uh, maybe help the GCI kind of establish some type of hold on the middle. As I say that immediately, G6 come in just collapsing on Piniferous. That's a very good use right there from Hannah because otherwise their demo would have died. They take down Soapy Meister, but they have to try and escape. Hannah might be caught out trying to dodge play around the spikes from Logan. None of them are connecting, so she's still able to stay alive, but now G6 squad come in, try to capitalize and uh, get all of those remaining GCI players. They are going to be able to do so. Hannah 
going to be able to stay alive however back all the way up to last but uh compared to where gci were just a few moments ago they were trying to push g6's last now they have to try and defend their own at uber disab kind of staying alive is some consolation but the uber ad is still massively in the favor of g6 i'm not sure if they know though because it looks like they're just poking right now but i do know they're taking the uber in right away aggressively Trying to stuff uh, the GCI players in spawn. So many of them in spawn right now. Five members I can count. And so much cap time. Mar Marmalou with the chain <laughs> train, just baiting the point. Grape Juice getting taken down, trying to block it, and they just finish off the cap easily. Yeah, and that is why they are you like a G6. You can't get like stuffed in the spawn with five people like that. It's just, I mean, you know, anyone's gonna lose. And the lone player who's outside tries to stop it, and he just gets picked early. Cap goes off. But uh, one thing about these mids is G6 has just been the better team at taking high ground early. So let's see if that might change. GCI might have noticed that. Grape is trying to play up top early. Yeah, he is trying to play up top early. He's going to have to back down, get some heals. And uh, it seems like they want to get aggressive over on this right side. And with Yum Yum going down first, that might be the call for GCI to back up and uh, try and get some defenses up on second. They take down Soapy Meister, so that should give them some freebie room. And actually some good damage coming out from Paniferous over in this choke side area. No one's really there on her team to capitalize off of it. So oh they are going to have to back up. But oh my, an amazing pipe coming out from Logan. Just catching scratch. And now the second over is looking a lot more precarious for Global Clan Ice. Marmalu makes a lot of space, just kind of bullies everyone back onto their last, and nah, that that's going to be real. second taken. That weapon, that weapon is fake. Like, Scratchy, <laughs> two of those, like, from so far away. Like, I don't even know what you do. But, yeah, uh, once again, G6 has them on last. Story of the match, just mid to last, over and over. Once again, looking for to see if they get the force. Kind of caught out. Terrible positioning. Marlou just getting right on top of her. Gets the force so easily. And G6 now, you know, they have everything going in their favor as it's been all match. Full Uber ad. They have full Uber ad. An opportunity to close it out. 5-0. Oh. Uh, Scratch, though, on the sniper has been able to get onto bot mode. So uh, that might just slow like a G6 down. They do have enough time to wait for bot mode uh, to come back up, and so they don't have to force, but with Caps dying, that's going to might spell disaster, as they do use the Uber as well. Uh, maybe that was a drop, but uh, because of that G6, their win that they had on the Silver Platter is no more. It's been eaten up by Global Clan Ice. They're trying to push out so much damage coming up over on this one door. Marmaduke trying to stuff it all by his lonesome, but he's going to die because of it. Now, the aggressive... Oh my god! That was an amazing pipe from Logan onto those bombing a, uh, soldiers, but it doesn't end up. Logan still gets taken down, and Global Clan Eyes have been able to push out of their uh, last on the second and trying to get in on the mid. Yeah, with two kills in their favor and Uberad, this is going to be uh, pretty. They're going to be able to try to take this in a second. Bombwood on the sniper, though. Uh, they're kind of overzealously peeking, but they realize that GCI is pretty close with the Uber, trying to take this sewer. They actually opt the bomb right in, knowing that there's a sniper. Unable to find anything, though. The rest of G6 just kiting really cleanly. Caps trying to see if uh, there's a potential refight. Grape Juice may be in danger. Caps finding him, but leaving oh, Logan alone. Can Scratch find the kill? He does. Really clutch from uh, uh, Scratch there. There's <laughs> so much going on. There is so the much back going line on. Of somehow. What? Oh my, Quax is just there. Now he has to try and win the 1v1 against versus the Sun. He's going for the hard court direct. Oh Why? Just jump. But, oh, that's Yo, this so is a clown show right now. There's like way <laughs> too much, like. Uh, I don't even know. Like, Caps oh. goes to kill Creep Juice, leaves Fall Guy alone, <laughs> and Scratch leaves his medic alone. Sophie kills love, and then there's a sniper v soldier 1v1 on the point for some reason, which the sniper wins. Ah, uh, that is ridiculous. Fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, bot mode's time as oh, a trap. sniper has ended. Oh! No, it's very, that. very close. Yeah, missed the debt. Uh, 
very fortunate for GCIs now. They are going to be trying to move in here on to second with that player advantage, making their way in through Choke. There are a few players in behind. One of them is going to be Yum Yum. Might have an opportunity. Does a lot of damage on the Marmalu, drawing a lot of eyes. He is going to go down, however, over by the entrance to lobby. And now um, another one is going to fall. This is going to be Grape Juice kind of uh, playing a little bit too far forward in IT. And now Botmo just rushing through IT, not spotted whatsoever. And he's going to be in behind, drawing eyes. And now with that opening, everyone else on... Oh, my Dude. God. Logan just deletes Scratch from existence. Hannah, very weak, is going to have to serve to stay alive. But oh. oh my god, he's just on the chase already. Marmalu comes in so big. And that is going to be the uber forced out of global clan ice. Yeah, uh, Logan is just Thanos. Like, uh, he's just taking every fight confidently, just peeking any door he oh wants. And the damage trade is just always in his favor. So the uber is actually going to come out here from... G6 on Hannah, oh. just absolutely deleted by Logan, who also finds Quacks. It's just like, I don't know. Like, what do you do? You gotta, if you're GCI, you gotta find a way to not die to Logan and shut him down, but he's just having his way with him completely. The tracker on the point and get taken care of, and with all these kills, G6 is feeling like uh, they wanna close up the game here. Yeah, they kind of messed it up a little bit beforehand, but this time it seems like it is their round to lose 100% as they are so pretty much just bombing around, make some space. They already got a lot of cap time onto the point Logan with just another pipe to take down Scratch for good measure, and that is going to be a 5-0 in the favor of Like G6. Very, very dominant, um, all things considered, and uh, it seems like GCI didn't really have any type of answer, and considering... Uh, that this was Global Clan Ice's map pick. Uh, it doesn't really look too good heading into Metalworks. I was gonna say, this was their map pick. That was, uh, that was violent. I... Honestly, like, they just didn't seem to have a really good, solid bid game plan. Like, G6, their, their game plan was pretty simple. Just take high ground, and then, like, Tunnel the first person who commits, basically. Like, the first person they see over extend, they just pounce on them. And so many fights would just end so quickly. Like, there wouldn't ever be, like, a long team fight. It would just end early. Initial kill, and GCI is just holding us, trying to play safe. But you can't really do that. You kind of have to, like, challenge G6 aggression, or, like, initiate your own aggression. And... The coordination from Grave Juice and Quacks never really looked solid, at least from my perspective. No, I 100% agree that at Global Clan Ice, they, they they would lose someone. Like you said, they would try to play safe, but every time they tried to play safe, it wouldn't work out. You know, like they, Marmalu and Soapy Meister would just be so aggressive uh, catching those players and just kind of committing everyone on G6 was just right there and uh, there were so many times where it wasn't like they G6 necessarily had uber advantage maybe they had uber advantage but that isn't what won them uh, the team fight it was just them kind of working their way in getting uh, someone down very weak someone else coming in to commit off of that and just kind of bullying GCI back step by step and a, uh, I don't know if you've looked at the logs yeah I saw I saw yeah, Logan drop yeah. 470 no like <laughs> Logan is playing so aggressive, like, is the thing, but there's always someone in front of him. It's, like, either bot mode, caps, or Marmaloop, Soapy, like, there's always someone in front of him, and he's still playing so aggressive. That's just a really, like, good coordinated team effort to activate him. But also, Logan just isn't missing. Like, he's tearing apart the combo scout from across the map. He's destroying the other team's demo. He's catching the med with his bombs. It's just, he's doing, like... He's playing demo to its full potential. That weapon is just also like insane. The lock and load, like that, like the st things I'm seeing aren't real. <laughs> like soldiers are just getting two piped in the air over and over. Oh no! And, uh, that's the thing when you give it to someone like Logan, who's already good with a uh, you know the normal iron bomber pills. It's just uh, de so so deadly. And a uh, yeah, 472 is actually kind of like monstrous damage coming out of from him and you can understand why gci wanted to be aggressive you know early on the mids you know get logan out of the equation as soon as possible but like you said that person just in front of logan protecting him at all times um just kind of made that really really hard and kind of undoable for gci
He's also just like insane at defending himself. I saw him like roam off to go take one v ones. Like I saw him take a one v one with a roamer on the flank for just just because <laughs> like he was feeling himself. It's just like what do you do? But yeah, like Marmalou is Marmalou and Topia are also drawing so much space, so much eye, so many eyes, and they're staying alive for way longer than they should be. GCI just feels like conflicted if they want to ch- hunt those players down, find those picks, or like try to block the other team from coming in. It just never seemed like they knew which option they wanted to take, whereas G6 was very calm and collected. Like, anytime Yum Yum or Grape Juice would try to go behind, it seemed pretty handled. Yeah, it definitely did, and uh, the times when they did go behind, it really felt like their team wasn't in position to try and uh, make use of a distraction that they were doing. I like the like you said when Marmalou and Sophie Meister were kind of getting in behind or bot mode. Everyone on G six was pressing the doorways, just kind of uh, forcing Global Clan Ice to look at every single doorway, the ones in front of them and the ones behind them, and uh, they were able to pounce on them because of that. But you know when Quacks or someone else from GCI goes in behind, they weren't uh, given the that team support that the like a G six players did for them. So that was kind of the case for process, but. Here on Metalworks, it is, you know, kind of a different, it's a different map, kind of a different flow a little bit, but a, uh, we did see G6 on this map previously, and that was against Global Clan proper. They didn't look super good on it, and uh, kind of the thing that bit them a lot was the mids, the thing that they looked on really, really good on in the last map on Process, as kind of been their, a, uh, their weakness, at least from what we've seen on Metalworks. Say, uh, do you think that GCI maybe has some type of opportunity to try and uh, get on G6 here? Do you think G6 picked this map to get better at it because yes, they were so... Yes, 100%. So, yes, that's, so that's poor definitely the, the idea. Last time. Yeah. I mean, the results of the matches don't really matter for G6. They're locked in the land. I think, pretty much, that's just like a given. So the, the idea is just, you know, keep working on the maps that they're bad at and just fix those weaknesses. So when it comes to pick bands on land, they won't have to worry about it. Just get better at it over time. So one thing that did happen, though, in that match that we watched uh, versus, was it like just, just the, the normal global clan, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the team. It's so confusing, like two global clans. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, against that team, they did end up winning the majority of the mids in the second half when they made the comeback that that was something that they did get better at so i think they're just making sure that they have it down by playing it in this match and honestly the best time to get better like at anything are like matches matches help you improve like more than anything scrims are just for you to try stuff out and you know just get better during matches 100 percent yeah matches can be where a uh, you get that get that team cohesion down on lock which uh, like a g6 already have in spades but uh, they're just gonna have to be uh, keeping on practicing that for this upcoming land because they got stiff competition freyo tech and witness gaming uh, kind of the three teams that we all assume to be there um, unless anything very, very out of ordinary happens, but uh, GCI are fighting for that fourth place, and uh, even though uh, you know the matches may not matter for like a G6, it definitely matters for them. They already kind of put themselves into a really good position, uh, beating their sister team in Global Clan proper, who are kind of the other team that we kind of expect to uh, have a very, very good opportunity to get that fourth spot, and so beating them once is really, really good. Because uh, that means, you know, assuming all, the, you know, those two teams, the Global Clan teams, lose to the top three, which we kind of expect, uh, that would give them the better in the head-to-head uh, to get that fourth spot. But the other thing is, if Global Clan come back later in the season and take over or defeat Global Clan Ice, then a, uh, it's going to come down to rounds win. And uh, having these kind of very bad 5-0 losses in comparison to Global Clan, who uh, have been having more losses, but they've been close losses might be the difference maker between who goes to land and who doesn't so a very a a good a good reason for global clan ice here to get every round possible because that might be the difference maker to whether they go to land or whether they don't definitely uh go check out that game if you didn't watch it because it was like one of the most wild rides you'll experience (laughs) watching a tft match it's just like oh reverse 
No, it was 4-0 and then tied 4-4 with a 5-4 ending, right? Yeah. If I recall. And it was just, I don't know, entertainment value across the board, in my opinion. It, it it really was because I, it just had kind of like all all the staples of a of a classic TF2 match. I mean, it had I I've been actually very happy watching Global Clan so far because they've been super aggressive with their Which Uber one? Shamu. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> global, global, sorry, global clan proper. They've been super aggressive with their Ubers, and Shamu has not hesitated whatsoever uh, to just let it rip. We saw it in that mark. match, and then we also saw it in this one where he just took it through lower on the map room, got onto Logan somehow, some way, and uh, he just got things he should not have gotten. So, uh, very exciting to see that. But, you know, on Global Clan Ice, when they won against Global Clan proper, from what I can remember, it really came down to a, a scratch. He had a really great game, but also the soldiers, Grape Juice and Quacks, were very, very kind of coordinated. And uh, we haven't had an opportunity to see that so far in the process game. Like this, I think it's just a harder opponent, you know, to, to be honest. But they have time to figure something out here. They they definitely have uh, the you know the VOD to watch of uh, G6 versus Global Clan. God, I'm so confused. Like I I can't like I have to like think about it. Like why are there two Global Clans? Uh, Name yourself something else. No uh, no, it's, it's uh, two Global Clans. But the thing is, it's not like Global Clan Ice and Global Clan Fire. It's Global Clan Ice and then just a Global Clan. There it's were like, like three yeah. different. WGs at one point because there was a different <laughs> one sponsored in like every region and I'd like and people sometimes people will talk about like the European one or the NA one and I just wouldn't I, I wouldn't know who they're talking about for like it's just, we need uh, like either more sponsors or like just stick to one team please god yeah. just like save me <laughs> no it definitely can be confusing and then also sometimes like You'll have the the few occasions where there's also a WG Highlander team. I think there's a oh WG EU Highlander team as well. So it, it can be very, very confusing um, when it comes down are there, to are it. Are there like league fees in Highlander? <laughs> like, what's going on? Uh, no, yeah. It, I, think, I think there are for the invite, invite Highlander. I'm not I, quite I, sure. I, I watch Highlander sometimes. Like, we catch it randomly every Monday for like the last, like, 20 years <laughs> well, yeah, you can, play it. yeah it's, it's the same thing it's, it's a lot of fun to watch even if it is a uh not as much fun to play in my personal opinion but you can watch it here in rgl on monday night uh that's where we have that for you but we are going to be going live very very soon what is going to be your prediction for this match i'm just gonna have to say 5-0 in the favor of like a g6 after that well, yeah, dominating you performance you just switched up on <laughs> i go i like, Are you I'll, just stick to five, I'll just stick to 5 to you for GCI. Alright, alright. Then uh, we'll see if GCI can maybe get their first round on the board this entire night. They weren't able to do so on process. They lost 5-0, uh, but might, they might have a better chance here on Metalwork. Still, still going to be the same matchup like a G6 versus Global Clan Ice coming here onto this first mid. Grape Juice having to dodge, take some spam, but it's going to be Logan who goes down early on the mid, and that opens things up dramatically for GCI bot mode. Trying to get in behind to try and find a crucial pick if he possibly can, and does so. Marmalu coming up huge with some nice rockets onto Hannah, and what was immediately looking like a very good mid for Global Clan Ice has dissolved before their eyes into a better mid for Leica G6. Both teams did lose their medics, so they're not going to be too happy about that, but it does equalize things. G6 still with the first mid win. Yeah, they saw the logs and they were like, none of that this time with uh, <laughs> killing Logan instantly. But then Hanno just ended up in like an incredible position on top of the point. While they're running crits here, as she's, uh, you know, they try to poke around. But Caps, Caps peeking a little. Dude, like, I'm not sure what happened on that mid. But Hanno just ended up in the corner alone, 1 HP, just surrounded by G6 players. The instant Logan died. Yeah, it was very, G6 very just sent it forward. 
Yeah, they did, and now we are gonna see G6 maybe do the same. Silphy Meister flying in uh, through Alley. Yum Yum trying to get a little bit aggressive. Now we have the counter bomb, but the crits is gonna come out, and it kind of suspends Grape Juice into the air. A lot of weak players on GCI trying to escape. They are all gonna get taken down, and now Scratch Rover wants to come in with the Uber. Has an opportunity to take down Lil Guy. Is gonna be able to execute on it. Now they have to clean up as many players as they possibly can, and they should be able to do so. Hannah, very weak. Paniferous now has to try and defend her medic right now. Is going to get a lot of damage out on to uh, Logan and Caps and is going to be able to keep them alive for just a little bit but eventually bot mode runs in from map room to take down Hannah and it looks like GCI should be able to stay in control of their second point but it was very very chaotic and because Lil Guy died earlier oh my god he's already in on mid grape juice trying to see if he, maybe he could get a cheeky pick but is going to back up because Lil Guy uh, died earlier. He's going to be coming up faster and is going to be very, very slight uber advantage to like a G6. That was an insane decision from Scratch to try to take that uber and Yum Yum actually trying to run forward into the whole team of G6 dying early. So he's just going to find the opportunity to push off this. Logan and Lil Guy going down really, going really weak. Grape Tree's trying to find some follow up. Doesn't manage to see anyone other than Caps, so he jumps away. And we're going to have a reset here. Wally should know that he is at there. He should know, and it seems like they are getting a little bit aggressive in here. One of the soldiers making space for G6, but someone coming in through the back lines. It is going to be bot mode. Does a lot of damage, but not enough to get the a, uh, pick there. Hannah didn't even have Uber to try and force, even if she wanted to. So, uh, going to be holding on to that one now. Grape Juice making his way into house, trying to see if he can maybe get a cheeky pick of his own with the counter sack, but it's instead going to be Yum Yum who falls in Baby Door. Marmalou getting two there, another on the scratch. So, that's going to be two scouts down for GCI, making this so much harder to hold. Yeah, the rest of G6 knows that with both scouts down, the soldiers know that it's uh, gonna be open up for last to be able to jump in with no scouts at a nine. Sophie already in, trying to lock out the far side, eats a lot of damage, looking for a bit, but Pen Penny finds that kill, and G6 is gonna off to cancel without Sophie alive to sack. They're gonna wanna try to slow things down, wait for him to come back up, and then work this as a team in this even uber situation. No gun up on the, uh, no gun up. And Scratch switching the NG a little late here. So maybe there might be a window of opportunity for G6. There should be a little bit of a window of opportunity. They uh, will know what off classes that GCI have as bot mode kind of swapped on the spy temporarily to just try and uh, get a feel of uh, what they were rocking with. But he's gonna stick up on the sniper class and uh, he's going to be trying to peek in through that shuttered doorway. They should have spotted him, but that's not going to stop a soldier from flying in. Zopi Meister is going to be able to get the force. Takes down Hannah. Super weak there. And a uh, very disastrous for Global Clan Ice. They're not going to be able to get anyone aside from Zopi Meister. And now they're going to have to try and hold last at Uber Dishad. They don't even have, uh, you know, the benefit of having to deal with a sniper as bot mode has gone all the way back to swap back up onto Scout. So it's going to be G6 with their classic six roster ready to take in this uber advantage push yeah it looks like we're gonna try to go through the spot left door here try to cut people off the spawn they ignore the uh, gun and actually try to kill the ng before he can swap off finishing the gun off later and then going to point right after i was surgical shoved everyone in the spawn found their pick and then played capped on swift last push yeah, really, really good last push from Like a G6. They're not fumbling the bag whatsoever. Uh, they had the advantage and they were able to use that to get the first point on to the board. So Like a G6 leading early in this second map here. And uh, we're going to see if maybe Loki can, can survive a little bit longer on this mid fight. He's already trying to deny Grape Juice some space and kind of spam some stickies over there. Kind of actually hold up in Lunchbox and have to rotate around as everyone else on GCI getting a little bit of high ground over on these blue crates is uh they're kind of all backed up they didn't have any ground whatsoever oh. and they lose all of it and they are just immediately sent back onto their second point uh, i guess a lot better of uh, positioning from like a g6 there yeah just getting too much damage getting spammed out no no high ground control and they just have to give it up like spotting that it's bad early on but sophie trying to catch the people in the house ends up dying probably finding the, the kills on the quacks or and actually still looking for more. Swats the scout under. And I just think about the Uber trade comes off here. Really scrappy fight, but G6 just taking the better of it in every situation. Cat Scratch caught here as well, and I think this round is also just looking grim for the side of the GCI, GC. 
It is 100%. They do have some respawners. Grape Juice up on the heavy, but he gets immediately <laughs> deleted. Oh my god, he comes out of spawn. He instantly dies. So much cap. Oh my god, Logan with some insane pipes, but it might be holdable. As he had to pull out a miracle. Yum yum. He's not going to be able to do that. Global that was and like... Ice lose their second round. Two stat pad team fights were just <laughs> literally every single fight anywhere it happens just goes in the favor of G6. Not like no one's able to find a favorable situation. They try to shove house to see if they can pick people while uh, G6 pokes the flank, and instead it turns into uh, the opposite scenario where Soapy realizes that there's a lot of people caught out there and you know just rounds over. That uh, round is over, and almost immediately, uh, so much space taken for like a G6. Global Clan Ice are playing so far back, and they lose one. They might lose Beniferous as well. Very weak, trying to escape through. Oh my, Sophie wow. Meister with that spoon on the Hannah. I thought she was safe, but apparently not at all. Uh, Quax is going to get a couple. A very aggressive bomb coming in from Grape Juice is going to get Logan. So a little bit of signs of life coming up from GCI, but... That was such a demoralizing way to lose the mid. I mean, they were playing super scared to begin with. They back up immediately when they lose one, and they still lose their medic regardless. So These are uh, with the quickest mid fights of all time, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Scratch on the sniper. Yeah. Find, yeah. Finds a initial kill. But the whole guy trying to milk actually gets forced by Fox to stuff all alone after Scratch finds the kill. Scratch going down now. This fight yeah. uh, is extremely scrappy as well, actually. Everyone's all over the place. They are all over the place. Seems like a few Global Clan Ice players are coming in from behind now onto Logai. Both soldiers jumping in onto the point from the back lines. Logan now is going to be one of the last ones left. Now it's going to be up to Caps to try and do something here. Uh, he is just going to be wrapping around. He's got his buddy in bot mode. Are they both going to go for it? No. Okay, he's kind of making his presence known to try and maybe get bot mode back out of safety and bot mode does back out and so uh global clan ice are gonna try and push out marmalade the furthest one forward doing a lot of damage and now the respawners from uh, like a g6 are coming in here now but they're taking a lot of damage mar he's so weak soapy meister is gonna get cleaned up nice rocket from quacks there to take him down bot mode over in map room just kind of drawing eyes being a nuisance threatening the back half. he's actually gonna get grape juice lower and he is eventually gonna fall and that was such an extended push out from global clan ice they do manage to to do it, but it was so scrappy. This is what you want to see if you're a GCI fan. It's just finally figuring out one of these scrappy fights for themselves, and now they're gonna be able to get a mid capture off of it. Scratch actually running around, just trying, drawing eyes, looping around, looking for anything he can. Uber advantage still on the side of GCI. I'm not sure if they know because they probably would have taken it the moment G6 got so aggressive. In fact, they're actually. Respecting G6 a lot, despite G6 not having Uber for the longest time. So I'm assuming that Anna just didn't keep track of that, wasn't able to spot it. Unfortunate for them, yeah, because like you said, they did have Uber advantage, but they are gonna be having the opportunity to try and pressure in on to G6's second. Uh, it is gonna be an even Uber situation. So they are gonna be going over into his alley side area. A fade away bomb from Soapy Meister bot mode. But Marmalu comes in, he holds Hannah up into that little corner by the pack, which can be a, a, a make or break scenario. You're uh, kind of out of harm's way, but now the aggression coming in from GCI, getting in onto the point. So much damage as uh, Soapy oh. is gonna fall over and lower and that's gonna be almost a complete wipe for like a G6. It's only gonna be low guy left. He can use the Uber <laughs> on the point and that is gonna be what he does, but he gets knocked off of it unfortunate for him oh my god he gets suspended and that is gonna be the first round for global clan eyes much needed yeah marvelu and bot mode were trying to get an early force to see if gci overcommitted into that valley side and henna just held uber trusted that marvelu was gonna get taken care of gci finds two picks they're able to push forward get even more kills because long i refuses to use and it just snowballs into that disaster of a situation as we go into another big fight here. 
Yeah, and this time Global Clan Ice kind of showing up to mid. The last few times they were playing super duper scared. This time they have a little bit more presence. Uh, G6 not instantly winning it as they have done. And now the soldiers kind of bombing around for Global Clan Ice, kind of being a distraction as G6 try to walk forward here. They do a lot of damage. No one has died just quite yet, but Lol Guy taking a bit. He is going to go down. Yelvium finds the kill. Really great opening pick, but can they keep Hannah alive? They're going to have to back up so far to make sure that is the case. Quacks is going to die on mid, but immediately G6 bombing forward. Marmalu, Soapy wow. Meister comes in. Oh, oh my, Soapy Meister. Bombed and Soapy just absolutely nuked them. Soapy definitely nuked the whole of GCI there. But Bombed trying to follow up, finding two kills of his own off Soapy's damage. That is so disastrous if you are Global Clan Ice. It was looking so good for them. You know, they had gotten Lil Guy early on the mid. They had backed up so far, but they just weren't able to deny Soapy Meister enough. And uh, that has just spelt them all the way back onto their last. They could have tried to maybe refight second if they really wanted to, but uh, they're just going to be content on last. It's going to be even Ubers. Uh, so not all bad. You know, it's good that they got Lil Guy early in in the first place, but still on the back foot yet again for GCI. I love that G6 is already poking before the Ubers start, you know, actually come up, but they try to work in uh, caps and he just gets picked. I think he might have just overextended actually, but yeah, here we are in another last hold scenario for GCI. They've managed to do it, so we'll see uh, what G6 is going to try to cook up here. Oh my pyro, oh my oh. scratch on the pyro. Marmalu might burn to death, oh. but he doesn't catch an arrow. He's waiting for it. he does get it, but so Scratch Meister. reflex kills him <laughs> for Sophie. That class oh. is broken. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie is probably saying the exact same thing right now as a uh, grape juice might find the kill onto a scout caps not quite aware there is going to be taken down uh, fortunately for him his team is going to be able to trade out his killer almost immediately but still is going to be player ad right now for GCI they're getting a little bit aggressive in lobby just trying to peek this yum yum kind of uh, going off adventuring on engineer <laughs> might get caught out because of it uh, no is going to be able to make their way back over it might get caught out in top Toxic is going to die, and now with a player advantage, the engineer down, it could be an opportunity oh, for G6 to try and spam the gun. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. Ow. Yeah. Ooh. And Grape, Grape Juice, juice going yeah, down, is going to yeah. die. Tried to pressure bomb with Sniper. We still have a Sniper with Sniper uh, situation here. And Scratch gets Ooh. the better of bomb mode. Swift shot there. Plenty of pubbing practice. 100%, you know, on that Uncle Topia or uh, Petrol's Oprah station. I said that the wrong way around, you, but you regardless. I, yeah, I've been on there a few times, but we're going to see how much it's applied to Scratch as he peeks out through lower. Low guy, however, oh, in a little bit of a sticky scenario. Yum Yum just comes in and is Engineer. able to force Low guy, and now everyone on G6 is trying to get as many picks as they possibly can. Quacks now in the back lines is actually going to be able to escape. That's criminal that he lives there. Now G6, they do have player advantage. They can maybe try and get the force out from Hannah if they possibly want to, as Soapy is going to get denied over in the right side area. Everyone on G6 trying to see if they can maybe get get in but they're not uh committing onto it so they are gonna back up now the uber scratch leading it in is gonna be able to get one onto bot mode quacks does go down but still the scooper very very good oh my goodness goes down to a long range try from logan that's such an unfortunate unflash for uh gci there but they've been able to get the ground they are without a demo though so uh g6 might do something but they don't have logan either so it has been a successful push out of last for global clan ice it all starts with Yum Yum Engineer materializing on top of Wall Guy, finding the force with no one else around. And here, with Sierra, we have G6 coming in to retake the point, actually, without much resistance. It didn't seem like anyone even really tried to get the force. They just off the whole blast and see if they could withstand the uber disadvantage here. We already have the heavy up. And yeah, we do already have the heavy up, and it's uh, very close right now for Hannah, almost at 90%. As a, uh, uh, they're walking in G6, take a lot of room before they even have to use, but that buys enough time. Yum Yum on the heavy is going to get one. Pinifers gets another. This is so much better for Global Clan. Nice, it might get another one in bot mode who goes down in lobby, and uh, the remaining players from G6 have to back up. They're over on the bridge, kind of playing over towards house, just trying to spam just a little bit. Logan maybe trying to see if he can play for any type of a at two pipes it's, he's been hitting them so far in this game but uh, fortunately for GCI no one goes down there so they've been able to once again 
push out of their last this time with uh, a much favorable uber situation as they uh they are going to be able to set up some type of defense here expecting to slow down here for like just a little bit before g6 figures out what they want to do waiting for the oh, not to get uber but Toki just trying to spot out if you can find someone there um i think i mean gci is looking a lot better than they were definitely on better than they looked on process and definitely better than they looked at the start of this match but here we have a uh, logan picking up early tc trying to find yeah. his lock loads soapy meister is gonna do a little bit of a fade away bomb gets a little bit of good damage on to scratch and Beniferous. He's gonna have to back up and now we have some aggression coming out from gci yum yum is gonna go down they do a bit of damage onto the power combo of g6 but uh, the same can be said for hannah who goes down to a long range to a rocket from soapy meister really great a uh, rocket placement from him just getting that spam damage gets the med pick because of it and that's gonna be a very unfortunate drop for gci now for uber coming in from low guy just saving everyone making sure no one goes down here quacks it does some fancy footwork to stay alive for a little bit but it's not going to be enough yum yum going to be the last one to fall in the third round going in the way of g6 super unfortunate drop for hannah there they could have capped that so quickly but they wanted every last kill for the stats there but yeah logan did a ton of damage as gci was exiting from shutter and i think hannah might have caught some of like the splash from the spam and then Sophie was able to just get a quick follow up to finish her off and but the problem was just letting Logan and the rest of uh, G6 walk up early but here we have Quacks trying to pressure Logan early jumping away not being able to find much both teams you know just taking opposite side G6 actually owning all the complete high ground here like GCI not really trying to contest at all just back in valley as G6 owns so much positioning they, they do own a lot of positioning, they and because of that, yeah, they, they're just going to have to give it up. And they're so weak as well. Oh, uh, Sophie Meister with the spoon takes down the No way, oh, no. dude. <laughs> oh, I just give up. And Scratch did, like, again, catches a long-range fight from Logan. And just, yeah, he types... Or <laughs> oh, wait, that's Quacks typing up on the spoon. Never mind. There's a oh. lot of cool new unlocks uh, if you play TF if you play 6v6 in the year 2024. Oh yeah, and Marmalu is already in, does a lot of damage, and that's going to be Hannah taken down. Uh, G6 are just immediately in onto last, but Uber being used from Lulgai. Uh, some good picks coming out from GCI, and because of it, they're going to be able to actually maybe hold on to this. Oh, Soapy Meister with a nice direct. The takedown Yum Yum is going to be able to come in with the cleanup, and it was looking maybe doable for GCI there at the tail end, but... G6 just coming in, putting pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes, and that is going to be the fourth round for them. Sophie is just like a, a highlight reel, like, especially on the <laughs> chase, like, chasing people in the second, he's so quick as they're exiting, and just, you know, he's just one of, like, the best jumpers, probably, like, you know, one of the best jumpers of all time in sixes, and he just finds his way on them so quickly, and just ridiculous two spoon kills. Uh, he makes it look so easy, but a, uh, a definitely a lot of work coming out there as Quacks comes in onto Batman, trying to see if he can maybe get a little bit more aggressive here. As they do bomb in, Logai reads that perfectly, is immediately backed out there as they, uh, so many weak players now on GCI, they're going to have to back. Oh my! Pipe. <laughs> Those long range pipes from Logan just delete Yum Yum. Hannah is so weak, it's just going to be so easy for Logan to bomb him, takes her down. That's going to be a full wipe. GCI, everyone dying, no one on G6 died, and I, I think it's fair to basically call it wraps here. I, I'm gonna say the same. Like, they're already in on last. Logan's already on the spawn door, and they're not gonna be able to get out the spawn here. But, oh, but no, what? actually hits the clutch of shot. He finds the angle on the wall guy. It's the perfect timing. So much cap time, though, for the side of G6. This is gonna be so strong. Look where Marmalu is, though. Marmalu. You think they'll check? There's. I, I think they. Oh, they might no, just wait, stay on last. Know. They don't know. Marmalu they has don't the timing. Know. He has they the timing know. right here. Oh my god. Oh my Quacks god. They don't know. They don't know. Quacks, 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 Quacks left. And he doesn't have a pain train. He doesn't. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, that. <laughs> that's that that is what a way to lose i mean they are probably gonna lose regardless but you know they had huge that kind of clutch. Yum -yum yeah yeah that huge clutch play from yum yum to basically uh save them the game and then just marmalu hiding up above 
not spotted gets it and that is going to be 5-1 for gci you were closer um yeah. so you you said a 5-2 uh, i didn't have any faith uh, yeah. but maybe i should have had a little bit <laughs> it looked uh, competitive at some points but i think just like the dm difference and the coordination just g6 just had it and I, they probably looked over their mistakes from the previous match heading into this one and cleaned up a little bit more but just the things that logan and sophie were doing like that was criminal they got away with way too much yeah they they really did i sophie logan and uh, just kind of getting in getting the pitch just bombing around like it was free it basically was for them at some point at some point sorry and they uh they had just no one else on gci really able to contend with that at all so that's going to be two maps uh for like a g6 extending their undefeated season i think they're currently sitting six and oh while global clan ice now are kind of sitting four and three so definitely doable for global clan ice if they want to make land it really comes down to their uh, next match against global clan proper and if global clan proper can maybe get an upset win against someone like freytech or witness gaming to kind of give them the edge there in that head-to-head -head. but for like a g6 very good signs very good showings if you are a g6 supporter uh kind of ironing ironing out the a uh, kind of kinks on that a uh metalworks map for them yeah you know that's what you want to see just going from map to map just those sort of improvements as we uh head closer to land which is is it almost exactly a month from now it's on the I, yeah. 20th and 21st so basically basically a month from now and you know if you're uh if you've never been to land before and you know you're thinking about attending just grab some of your friends and try to show up i feel like the, it's a it's a fun experience even if you're not playing Although I think uh, there's, an, there's an open tournament, right? Like there's spots. Yeah. I'm not I'm not really sure what the status of that is, but if there are spots. Definitely try to play. Playing TFT online is so fun. It is so much better of a uh, of a game. Just a uh, for the reason that you said, you know, just meeting up with the people that you've been playing uh, scrims with, and you know, in the community with for uh, years, decades, uh, for for some people. Yeah, but don't say decades, bro. I will cry. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not decades yet. It's a decade, oh, maybe. No, it, it, it been a decade. <laughs> it def been a decade. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, still, it's it's really cool to see, but. Uh, one person that we can expect to see on LAN is here with us right now, Sophie Meister, coming off, off of those clean two games against Global Clan IS 5-0 and 5-1. First off, congrats. And a, um, I guess secondly for me, was that Metalworks pick for me? I just kind of, all right, let's say, uh, let's iron this out and uh, get this ready for LAN type of deal. That was exactly what it was. Yeah, we, we picked Metalworks because um, we want to... We... We're trying to improve on Metalworks because we don't have that many reps with it, with Marm. So we just picked Metalworks. We figured, you know, what better time to pick a map and try and improve on it than uh, to pick it in a match. And, uh, yeah. Not, that, that, was, that was the only reason why we picked Metalworks, to be honest. You had some, uh, like, two big moments that I saw. Just chasing people valley both times. Like, yeah. the huge nuke, huge flank from you and bomb mode and one... And then the double soon afterwards. Oh, yeah, that was ridiculous, after. yeah. Yeah. Highlight reels. Yeah. Yeah, it was highlight reels. Also, uh, Logan with just a... I, I, I mean, what's it like playing with a demo like Logan who can just pull out, like, long-range pipe shots uh, like that out of I'm nowhere? And it's just like... my fucking feet up and just... <laughs> uh, you're in the backpack, bro. Damn. <laughs> oh, admitted it. <laughs> oh, he just pipe, demo piped. Okay, I'm bombing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that weapon, that weapon needs to be banned. I'll say oh, no. That weapon oh, needs to be banned. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't say no. Yo, the spoon abuser says a weapon needs to be banned. It's more broken than spoon. <laughs> it's more, it's a way more broken than spoon. Alright, bro. Whatever you say, bro. There's no risk know. involved in that weapon. <laughs> That's actually true. That weapon is insane. I think. Me. I think I saw Scratch get like sniped as he was trying to run away last, like last seven night. times. Yeah, last night in the scrim, the ball spoon combo. You remember that? Was it? 
Yes, yes, dude. Do, yeah, not, yeah. do not talk about last night. I already wiped that from my memory, bro. Do not ask me to ring ever again. I am retired for a reason, bro. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that weapon doesn't even get banned, though. Dude, uh -huh. it's, so, it's like, first. so confusing sometimes. You're just, like, you're just standing around and, like, I swear it's it's so tiny and it's so fast. You just get hit by the lock and, like, yeah, it's like, like a flashbang. randomly. Yeah. But, uh, how are you feeling, uh, headed, you know, we're a month away from LAN, how are you feeling? After playing, okay, so we have a, we have a pretty close LAN race, you just played both those teams, both global clans, like, basically back-to-back -back almost, which, right. which do you think has the edge after playing those? I don't know, because a lot of, um, a lot of the, the last Metalworks match that we played against the, the other global clan... Uh, we kind of just kept shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, this match, I felt like a lot more like us, like we were like playing normal. So, I I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. They, we talked about it last week. Like they, they won the the head to head. Like GCI won the head to head against the Global Clan. So, that that automatically gives them like a a big like edge in the in the race. So I'm I'm not sure. I think. For some reason, this global clan, the global clan ice, the team we just played, they have a harder time playing against, like, us for your witness. Um, but they compete a lot better against like just global clan. I don't know why that is, but it's it's really weird too because that other team has had close games with you and Froyo. I don't know yeah. if they played witness yet. Uh. I... I'd have to check, but I'm assuming they haven't. Still, right, yeah. uh, it's just, you know, they've had so many close games, haven't posed that. Oh, no, they did. They did, actually. I think they played them 4-3 as well. So they played... No, it's yeah. Froyo. It's Froyo they haven't played. It's Fro right. They, uh, yeah, they, they have close game against us, close game against Witness. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it is that that um they have such hard games against... uh. The other like top teams, GCI that is, I'm, I'm referring to. But, yeah. diff, bro. I don't know. But if I had to, if I had to say, like right now, I think probably just based off the matches that I played against them, I would say Global Clan might win the second match, like the the the, the second time around. But like they have to, right? Yeah, yeah. The, I I don't know. It's gonna be close. One one question I do have is that a uh, what what kind of makes this season exciting? For one, is that it is a land season, but two, uh, we kind of had the unique joy of having three. We've been talking about it, three really great top teams uh, in invite. You guys, Witness Gaming, and Freo Tech. Generally, it might just be one. We're lucky if it's two, but we're extremely lucky when it's three. What is it like, kind of playing that when you have? three or two other really competitive teams to at least scrim or a uh, just kind of uh watch as well uh it's a lot it, it's a lot nicer because you get like better like scrim practice i guess and then obviously the match is a lot more competitive like it's a little it's kind of hard to get like i guess like you know like super good practice in some of those seasons where it feels like the the skill gap is like really big but this season i don't feel like that's necessarily the case um, like the scrims are obviously like a lot better and then the matches are a lot closer and um, yeah it's been a while since we've had like the like I guess like us WG and, and Froyo like played the last time it was season 9 I think the the, the last RJ line I think yeah the last time I yeah. played too actually yeah yeah so it's been about two years oh, it's crazy to say out loud it's crazy yeah, to think it was yeah, two just, years ago just yeah don't put that thought away bro <laughs> <laughs> so been having a, <laughs> a rough two days, <laughs> Just keep getting reminded of my age. Like, TC yeah. was like, uh, you know, if you played with your friends for decades, come to land, like, decades. De like, no, that's, that's like, what I didn't say that. No, that I know, dude. Like, that was like aimed at me. I'm like, I'm like, I'm right here, man. Like, Jesus. Oh, shit. Well, uh, Soapy, who is your MVP uh, from your team tonight, you know? It's always Logan. Yeah. I go Logan. It's my, yeah. it's my guy. Logan and Logan and Logan. I'd say. Logan does a Logan does a lot for us, and I don't know if people people realize that. 
It's the rock, bro. Yeah, the mental seems. rock. Why do they always uh why do they always send you into these, by the way? Like there's there's so many characters, so much personality that we're missing. Well all right, I'll just them. Them. No, 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 wait, oh, whoa, 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 that's not what I meant. Yeah, I'm saying like like why aren't we getting more, you know? Like it doesn't always have to be a solo post game. Like, like where do we get like a like a goofy cap slogan interview? I mean you call him I get him in here. Like you should like you could. Uh, no, he's not gonna join. <laughs> I, he, he, he told me to join. They're so shy. <laughs> Well, uh, unless you have any more questions, Zilly. No, I'm good. Alright, Soapy, congratulations on the dub. Do you have any shout outs you'd like to give tonight? Shout out to shout out to my team, shout out to G6. Everyone that has ever played on G6, everyone that's been involved, shout out to you all. And shout out to the viewers, shout out to the production casters. That's, that's pretty much it. Alright, uh, Zilly, you got any, any quick shout outs? Um,. Yeah, shout out to like artists. Uh, he like messaged me something during the game that I didn't read, so just shout out to him. <laughs> so, you know, I don't even. Adi. <laughs> oh, uh, I will. I will mirror some of your shout outs. Sophie, shout out to you guys for winning. Uh, shout outs to Global Play Nice, you know, for showing up, trying their best, trying their hardest. Shout outs to all the all you guys for watching. Um, and shout outs to Zilly and Dolphin for doing all the work here at RGL. And uh, that is going to be it for us here at RGLGG. Uh, don't worry. I think we're going to be back tomorrow, actually, um, for maybe a very exciting game versus a Witness Gaming and Global Clan. Not quite sure if that's going to get scheduled to that day, but I think we are going to be back tomorrow and then Thursday, if not Wednesday. So stay tuned. More exciting Invite 6s on the way here at RGL. Um, and until then, have a good night.